um, and then sort of mint palette and spiciness cloves herbal extract starts to build in the in the on the on the mid palette and then you greet it with petrol fumes diesel gasoline rubber strong rubber note quite dirty on the on the mid palette um well good day everybody and welcome to my channel whiskey journey and just a few things before I do my review, um, just with regards to the review that I did yesterday of Master of Malt's Caroni, uh, 22 year old. So when I published that uh, review, it was definitely still available on the website, Master of Malt. Um, but I noticed by the evening that's all sold out, um, all gone, um, which I did think would happen with that bottle because it was a very, very reasonable price um, when it comes to Caroni. Um, so if you guys, if any of you guys managed to nab a bottle, congrats, and I hope you enjoy it as much as I've been enjoying it. Um, also with that release, I forgot to mention with regards to its aging, the 22 years of aging, I have no idea, and there's no information available, I have no idea how many years it was in the tropics versus continental aging, so I can't really comment on that one. Okay, but um, if, so for today's review, going back to Trinidad and trying out another Caroni, uh, this one is a little bit different in the sense that um, this is a little bit younger than the last release I did. So the previous release was 22 years old. This one is 18 years old, 18, and um, bottled by Le Mason and Valier. So it's another Valier bottling, which always interests me. I always have enjoy uh, Valier's bottlings. Um, so this is essentially a replica of an older bottle. Um, so it's a 100th anniversary um, Navy rum, extra strong, 90% proof, which is 51.4% uh, ABV. So very in, um, interested, interested to try this one again um, and share my review with you guys. Um, very, very different profile though to the um, other bottling from uh, Master of Malt though. So what we'll do as usual, and not too much information guys, just gonna go straight into the tasting notes going to do the nose, the palate and the finish and just see what we get with this rum. Okay, right, so straight onto the nose and this is at its full strength, 51.4%. So on the nose. Okay, so the first, one of the first notes I get is wood, but it's quite a distinctive type of wood. Um, Back in when I when I worked in South Africa, I, I worked for a tobacconist for, for quite a few years, and we used to sell a, a, obviously a Cuban type cigars, but we used to sell humidors as well. And um, those humidors, um, as far as I'm aware, they were made of cedar wood. And when you opened the humidor, you got that instant sort of smell of beautiful cedar wood. And I get that on this, although it feels slightly sweeter. Um, but yeah, definitely cedar wood. Black olives as well. There is some um, obvious industrial notes with this petrol fumes, gasoline. There is also um, a strong rubber note as well. Um, smells almost like a, a bicycle tire tube, that sort of smell, very distinctive. Or even a snorkel, that sort of rubber smell definitely getting that with a hint of smoke it does come across as savory sweet um but definitely a banana definitely getting a banana note on this one there's um this has been sitting now for uh, quite a while in the glass at least 20 minutes and um there's an earthy note that um, has developed and it develops more and more as it sits in the glass. So lovely earthiness. There's a medicinal type quality with this. Now when I say medicinal, I don't mean iodine that you get from the likes of Laphroaig. Um, this is medicinal, it's almost like a cough syrup. Um, definitely that sort of vibe in my opinion. It just reminds me of my childhood really when you used to you know, when, you, when your parents, you know, when you get a cold and you get a cough, straight the first thing you do is give you the cough syrup. And I get that sort of medicinal quality to this. There's some obvious spices as well, and definitely a herbal type edge to this. Um, 
licorice for sure. Some mustiness as well. But really nice balance overall. So um, the industrial tones and uh, the rubberness doesn't, or the rubbery notes don't take over the beautiful other complex notes that we get from the spirit. Um, there's also some treacle as well. Definitely some toffee, <coughs> but not as sweet as the Master of Malt bottling. Definitely not. No, it's just a stunning nose, guys. Beautiful, beautiful nose. And I prefer this in the Copita. I have tried it numerous times between Copita and Glencan, and I definitely prefer the Copita nose um, and palate, actually. All right, so let's just have a wee taste and see what we get. Mm. Wow. Dry and spicy with licorice and leather in the finish there. Mm. Bit of that rubber as well. Okay, so lovely first sip. Um, nice viscosity on this one. Oily arrival. Starts out sweet. Banana. Almost a jammy type quality, but not quite. And then as it starts out sweet, but then it becomes more savory. I'm getting olives, black olives in brine. Um, and then sort of mint palate, the spiciness, cloves, herbal extract starts to build in the, in the, on, the, on the mid palate. And then you greet it with petrol fumes, diesel, gasoline, rubber, strong rubber note quite dirty on the on the mid palate um, and then it becomes more medicinal and even now I'm getting some tannins from the wood but also this very strong herbal note eucalyptus perhaps and then much like the master of malt bottling beautiful mint minty freshness in the aftertaste on the finish that just lingers and then that rubbery note, that inner bicycle tube note comes back in the finish and it just dances on the tongue. And that note for me just sticks to the palate for ages on this particular release. Um, it almost feels like it's a bit rough around the edges on the mid palate to the finish, especially with those petrol, that petrol um, fume note. But it's still, I still feel it's quite balanced. Um, there's a very much it's very much sweet in the arrival and then it's savory and then you get some sweetness later on as well it's definitely not as sweet as the master of malt bottling and this one as i've said to you in the previous review i did on it um this is a far more dirtier profile in my opinion um compared to the master of malt bottling the master of malt bottling in my opinion shows its dirty side when you add water and you experiment with water. This shows its dirty side straight away. Um, that's just stunning, guys. Now, licorice. Strong, strong licorice note developing. Um, and it just, honestly, just sits on your palate for ages. Right, I'm going to try this now with just a few drops of water. So, um, you know, four drops. Let's bring down the strength just a little bit, not too much. And let's see if the profile has changed. Yeah, that um, <coughs> this rum, as I've said in my previous review, Caroni, um, as I said, I'm very new to it, but goodness me, it's completely different to anything else I've tried uh, from any rum. Um, really has its own charm, in my opinion. Right, so let's just have a wee, wee nose of that now with the reduced ABV. 
just four drops. Toothpaste, <laughs> toothpaste, minty toothpaste. That's the first thing I get now. Eucalyptus as well, eucalyptus oil. Black olives now, more, more black olives coming out and the industrial petrol fumes, petrol fume note is also coming out um, just with that, those few drops of water coming out a bit more. Still getting some of that banana as well. That's pretty much the only fruit I'm getting. There are other sweet tones which could be identified as fruit, but if you had to ask me what fruit, I couldn't tell you. Um, the Master of Malt bottling is definitely, definitely more fruitier, definitely more berries in that sort of atmosphere with the Master of Malt bottling. This one, I just really get bananas and unidentifiable, unidentifiable fruits. There's a hint of smoke as well. And that rubberness, old leather, sweet leather, just beautiful. Right, let's just have another wee sip. I think I prefer that with a few drops of water. What was initially oily arrival at its full strength is even oilier and thicker. Beautiful mouthfeel. Sweet banana. Petrol. Petrol fumes definitely. Um, minty eucalyptus. Um, rubber, lots and lots of rubber coming out again, getting quite dirty. As I said, that almost rough around the edges feel in the mouth. Um, wouldn't say it's I'm not talking youthful or anything like that, but just, just mechanical, <laughs> just industrial, um, very unusual, like being in a machine, you know, um, a garage or a machine workshop or something like that. Just that sort of, that sort of style. And now the wood tannins come in and yet again, and you get, um, it's quite oaky, but you still get lots of that minty freshness I was talking about. Black olives still there in the finish. Briny, almost like a coastal top sort of edge to it. Um, tar, I'm getting that as well. It's, guys, it's just, a, it's just stunning. Just really, really stunning. Um, and I think that it complements the Master of Malt bottling really, really well. As I said in my review for the Master of Malt bottling, that felt to me more for beginners to get used to the Caroni spirit. This one just for me takes it up just another notch. In a perfect world, I would probably have a blend of this one and the Master of Malt bottling together because that uh, toffee note in the Master of Malt bottling is absolutely gorgeous. And you definitely get more fruitier side. Um, to the rum. Perhaps that's maybe more a lighter style. This this to me feels very heavy. As I said, very medicinal, cough syrup-like quality. And um, as I said, I'm not gonna hop on about it. Most unusual rum I've tried, tasted in recent times. And there's nothing to me that comes anywhere near this sort of profile. Um, maybe others that come kind of close perhaps, but this kind of stands out on its own. And um, yeah, this is just a, a really, really good bottle, guys. Um, I mean, okay, it's not cheap, but um, it's just been great to be able to try this uh, particular Caroni. And if I happen to stumble across other Caronis as well from Valier that are a decent price on auction, I'll probably get them and try them. Okay. Um, but as it stands, this uh, Valier bottle, um, as I said, 18 year old, fully aged in the tropics, just stunning. And as I said to you before, um, if you have a few tots of this before you go to bed, brush your teeth because all you're going to taste is rubber the next morning. It's got a very, very potent aftertaste that just lingers on the palate. <laughs> okay, guys, but yeah, that's just a stunning drop, guys. And um, 
yeah i hope you enjoyed the review um, but if you enjoy my content guys then please like comment and subscribe to the channel it is always appreciated uh, but as usual folks not much else to say except have a fantastic day i'll see all of you again soon take care guys cheers